head to the feature match. The finals of Grand Prix Strasbourg 2014, right now. Hello and welcome everyone. This is Grand Prix Strasbourg 2014 and this is the finals. Pierre Jean of France, who is the runner-up from Porto Saros, is playing against Tomasz Naz from Hungary. And this is it. The trophy is right there on the table. We have the head judge Kim Warren um, watching over these players. And it looks to be a relaxed atmosphere as we uh, witness so often in the finals of these huge tournaments. 2,000 players descended to Strasbourg and uh, we've had a tremendous weekend here. Mm, we've seen uh, all kinds of beautiful plays like uh, end hostilities on a board with uh, Zurgo Helm Smasher. We've seen uh, crazy stuff like Arrow Storm on your own Sultai Flare just to gain some life. We've seen beautiful uh, bluffs being executed, for example with uh, Dragon's Eye Savants, revealing uh, a morph, then playing a different morph looking at the opponent's uh, hand. Lots of uh, beautiful things have happened here in Cons of Tarki Limited. But in the finals, it's go going to be Pierre Dajan's Ebzan deck versus uh, Tamaj Naj uh, Sultai deck. And we're being joined here by Matej Zalakai, who I'm sure will teach us uh, how to pronounce uh, Tamaj's name. Um, but first, let's... Uh, see what is going to uh, happen with uh, Pierre's hand. Yeah, a bunch of lands, a bunch of spells, looks good. Yeah, and uh, the correct way to pronounce it, I, I actually just asked, is uh, Tamaj Noj. Tamaj Noj, Noj. Yeah, no, <laughs> no Frank. <laughs> I, I, I keep on trying, but I don't think I'm ever gonna learn this. Yeah, so uh, a quick uh, two lands from Pierre without a play, but uh, Tamaj does have a smoke teller and Pierre doesn't have a third land. Let's see if Tamas uh, has the third one. Yeah, he does, and he adds a morph to the board. This is not a good situation for uh, for Pierre. If he doesn't draw a land immediately, yeah, I was I was just uh, talking about that. Tamas Nash has has somehow found the balance of drafting controlling decks that also put on pressure and really uh, board board development as soon as possible. So. It's almost like whatever happens, he's happy about it. And he's been smiling the whole weekend. He was like, yeah, I checked with my Miranda in Tower Shell. Doom blasts everything away. Uh, <laughs> what are your ads? And it was, it was just a beautiful to watch. He's, mm. been, he's been really playing well. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, um, he does have a, a nice deck that can, do, uh, can attack from several angles where he can have a strong early game. But he can easily overpower his opponent in late game. The one thing I, I'm worried about, and what Martin Yuzo was most disappointed with, is that he doesn't have that many Delph enablers, and he has a lot of Delph cards. So, uh, oh, we, <laughs> but he doesn't need Delph if he can uh, just put on four or five Bellowing Saddle Brutes. No, that's a target, though. So, this is a huge wing. Suppression field uh, mm -hmm. did take out the Saddle Brute, triggered a prowess on Seeker of the Way. So, um, that's basically a six point live stream right there. Here we go. Well, uh, well played from Pierre Dajan, who also managed to draw his fourth land, but I think he's missing black. Let's see. Here's Scout the Borders, uh, one of the few enablers in uh, Tamash Na uh, Naj's deck. There's a CDC, which oh. is uh, the other enabler. Island or CDC? Yeah. Gotta be Island. Mm, he does have a Savage Punch in his hand. Probably some other cards. Uh, Showing a lot of restraints. I would be tempted to at least uh, take the CDC in the hope of drawing an island, but <laughs> this is probably the, the correct play. Yeah, there, that's why. So Sultai Scavenger, I was surprised. He, he could have also played the Sultai Scavenger just for one black and then Savage punched the, the Seeker of the way, but he's playing it slow, no need to rush. Yeah, he might also be keeping a Savage Punch for a more threatening card. The Seeker, well, it's 2-2, maybe goes to a 3-3, three -three, but yeah. Tamash can deal with that. Also, I think a, a bit less scary from Abzan than from Jeskai, for example. Mm. 
What, what is that? Yeah, it's an abomination of Cthulhu. Cthulhu. That explains why he doesn't really care about the ground creatures too much. Yeah, uh, he gets rid of the long shot squad uh, as a precaution because once it goes to four four, there's not much there can be done there. Yeah. There's a trade with the smoke terror, but Pierre still takes six, goes down to five. <laughs> that was the reason why he why he sabotaged punch yeah. before before combat. Yeah. He wanted to attack with smoke terror. Yeah, wow. and that's game one. Time of night demolishing. We might, be, we might be finished early here. I mean, uh, the whole top eight is going so swiftly. All, almost all the matches are finishing two to zero, zero and even the two ones are going uh, about quite fast. It, I think that it has a lot to do with uh, how uh, aggressive some of those decks were. Martin Yusa had a very aggressive blue red deck that that just doesn't sit back for a long time. Tamaj Knight's deck certainly can can do some attacking, and uh, yeah, some of the other decks were uh, could. Just be doing really, really cool things. Yeah, I'm hoping we get to see some uh, some action from the Sidisi in the next game from uh, Tamash. <laughs> Maybe has, uh, has been the best card in, in Tamash's deck, right? By far. Like, by it's, yeah. not it's, it's not, close. not it's even like close. Yeah. If you, I think if you could take like the two, the second and the third best card, Sidisi would still be better. Mm. Like if you could add them together. Yeah, I mean, he has a murderous card in his deck, which is usually one of the best cards. But Sidisi enables his whole deck uh, so beautifully. Uh, getting getting cards in the graveyard for his murderous cut, shambling attendant, treasure cruise, uh, yeah, just all these cards. Does uh, one of you know when he picked the CDC? Uh, I wouldn't be able to say, but it it w I think it was opened by by uh, Martin. Could be. Uh, if if that was indeed the case, then uh, Tomasz might have uh, gotten it as a third pick, so which is nice which is quite good. Quite, quite a gift if you're in uh, the Sultai colors. Yeah. One of the best things that you can uh, pick up. It also synergizes nicely with uh, Scout the Borders. If you have Sidisi first and Scout the Borders, you get a free zombie, lots yeah. of value. So I, I like the look of uh, Tamash's uh, deck. Of course, Pierre was kind of stalled on mana in the mm -hmm. previous game. Wasn't able to cast all of the cards that he uh, had in hand, which, uh, which is a factor in uh, indeed a format that can be so so fast so aggressive mm. yeah, I agree absolutely I haven't seen much of uh, Pierre's deck because I was always watching the other matches he we haven't seen him in, in, the, in the quarterfinals what kind of deck does he have and why do you think uh, he would be able to turn this around the, well we saw the we saw the match against um, Kentaro Yamamoto and it was just it had like I would I would almost say it was a calm death in a mm. sense that he was always sitting there and you had the feeling that he's winning somehow even if it wasn't apparent on board and sure. then he just has his last card is just the absent charm that he needs mm. and i love alabaster Kirin. um his ground creatures are spectacular at some point he was facing um jessica ascendancy a bunch of tokens and more he could still attack with all of his creatures because there was basically no danger whatsoever yeah. of them getting dominated and that's i think that's great in this format if you don't have to be afraid even of morph creatures because your creatures are just so beefy. Mm. Um, we see Advent Guide in his hand. We yeah. saw Witness of the Ages. We saw multiple um, Delf creatures, scavengers. Sure. All right, so here we go into game two of Grand Prix Strasbourg Finals. Tamaj Notch starts, starts off with the Jungle Hollow. Pierre Dajan again with Forest and Flames and no turn to drop. Well, Tamaj starts off with a Teamer Charger. Mm, curving out nicely. Some people might uh, want to keep it as a morph, but no, you just want to curve out, play it as a two drop uh, whenever you can, and then start attacking, get ahead on board. And well, up here might be uh, blocking here. Is, he it the ab is, it, is it the absent guide actually? If it is the absent guide, uh -huh, I don't think Pierre mm. wants to uh, trade it away just yet. Mm. Yep, he doesn't block, and there's a Jessica Winscar from for Tamash. Perfect mana for both of these. Yeah. I thought I saw an Alpine Grizzly, but it might be something else here. Here just passes. It looks suspicious. Yeah, well, one thing that Tomasz knows for sure now is that this is a morph that Pierre wants to uh, keep in play. Though Tomasz might also have to be uh, scared of a Sage Eye Harrier, like the 1 5 morph. Mm. If yeah, if it, it, yeah or it, 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 it can, it can well. block. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, Pierre already mentioned it, uh, his love of Sidisi's pet. Oh, it actually is the Sage Eye Harrier. Yeah, it is. Oh, I actually Not thought it was guide. the Absent Guide, but... Whoa. Uh, Sultai Charm, though, for Tamash. Gets rid of that. Prowess as well, so Pierre's already down to 11. Mm -hmm. The 
like these these double digit um, life advantages in this format are really tough to, to swing mm. swing around because every attack that you make is exposing yourself to just getting tricked uh, and, and beaten to down to zero very very quickly uh, with like prowess with these kind of trumpet blast mm -hmm. effects and so on. There's an Alpine Grizzly, uh, the one that I mentioned. Not the best block against the Teamer Charger and a Jeskai Wind Scout. I'm going to be honest here, like, it would have been better for Pierre if he had a worse morph that would have just wanted to trade. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's kind of yep. it's kind of funny how he, was, he got punished for correctly waiting with his, um, with his Harrier there. Yeah, yeah you effectively traded, borders. like, seven mana for three mana on his opponent's side of the board when his opponent was indeed uh, on the aggressive side with a two-drop. Uh, there's a scout the borders revealing singing bell strike, bellowing settler, settler brute, but also a pearl lake ancient. That's a card that can, can take the game quickly if you uh, put it into play. Flash six seven can be countered. Prowess you can bounce it to your hand. But does Tomaj actually have some lands in hand to uh, get up to seven mana? Yeah, not, not sure about that. He takes the bellowing settler brute, passes yeah. on the pearl lake ancient. Yeah, if you don't have the lands to cast it, it makes sense. And so far, Tomaj is ahead in the game, and the cheaper card may allow him to solidify that advantage. Yeah, he did get to pump up the uh, Jeskai Wenska, so Pierre falls down to eight. And it doesn't look like. Oh, there's a Rakshasa Death Dealer as well. Yeah, one of the best two drops in the format. Also fine on turn five or six. Not Even better, maybe. Yeah, not that it's best when you have two islands already in play. Uh, that's. Uh, that was relevant against Martin Yuza, uh, where he couldn't pump up the Rakshas of Death Dealer twice in one turn. Uh, it's, but it's still a super efficient card if you can sure. only activate it once. Of yeah. course, it becomes completely absurd if, if you can really spend all your mana. So is it Abzan Guide time? Do you have it? And the next question, what do you do with it? <laughs> <laughs> True, he can, he can play it as Morph and keep up Abzan, uh, Abzan Charm, which I definitely saw in his hand. <laughs> or you just play it face up, but then yeah. if Tamash has a swamp in hand, mm. you can't really line up a good block against the Rakshasha yeah. that dealer. And I, re <laughs> I find it quite interesting how uh, Pierre lined up his land, and uh, it, it made it that much more obvious that uh, <laughs> he has something for these mana. Maybe he's just trying to bluff, but we know he has the uh, Absent Charm in his So hand. is this going to be the no block or the block and Absent Charm? That doesn't really work, right? You, you have to expect your opponent to... Well, it's it's really tough. Like if you can if you can read Tomash's mind, <laughs> then maybe. Then maybe. We'll see. It, I mean, Tomash is not going to pass if you block if you block the death dealer. That would be very unlikely. But the question mm. is, does he pump or does he regenerate? Mm. And I think regenerating is right. Yeah, I'm not totally. sure. I, I, it's I think it's definitely regenerating. Mm. But if he regenerates, then Pierre. Then he has um, no activation left. Pierre puts two counters on his morph. True. So I think Pierre can block. Mm -hmm. and because if, if Tomas pumps, then you have to exile the Death Dealer, but it's still a great use of your turn. He could also mm -hmm. just. If, if, if Tomas doesn't, doesn't activate here, that, that would be. Yeah. So what did he go for? He doesn't know. Yeah. So we, d we don't know <laughs> if he <laughs> pumped or regenerated. Well, we we'll find out, right? We'll, we'll find out soon enough. I think we can we can deduce it from the mode of the Abzan charm. Yeah, it's pumped. So it wasn't regenerated; yeah. it was pumped. So now there's the Abzan charm, which is better against, for example, CDC stat. But still, Pierre takes two, goes on six, and there's a swamp and a saddle brute. So yeah, that's the problem. Like if you had if you had been able to put two counters on your um, morphed Abzan guide, then you would have a creature that could. Um, battle with with uh, your opponent's creatures and now it's oh okay i take that back you have you have a great creature against the saddle yeah now. i was still surprised how much did not play the swamp before combat i mean of course then the opponent knows that the bellowing saddle is coming but and then he has for two activations of the rakshas death dealer he could have just mm. regenerated and mm. if pierre had played something then he could have pumped yeah well pierre can contain the bellowing saddle brute he doesn't have an answer to the jeskai wind scout yet and his absent guide cannot profitably attack into the Saddle Brood on the next turn. Yeah, and it's even going to change with his Savage yeah. Punch. Savage Punch ma also makes the Saddle Brood uh, 6 power, mm -hmm. makes the Wind Scout 3 power. So there's the trade, and Pierre goes down to 4. So two swings away uh, 
with the Jessica Wind Scout also places the land, goes up to 22. Passing the turn. P looks like Pierre has nothing here. Or does he have a kill shot? Attack for two. Pierre. Attack for two. No. no, if he had a removal spell, he would certainly play it. Yeah. He does Can he draw one here? Or is, is he it? going to extend the hand? There's the handshake. And Tamas Notch takes home the trophy here in GP Strasbourg. <laughs> and I'm sure he... Uh, it's just... Uh, something that he wants to do on the, on his way to Nice for the World Magic Cup, where also he wants to pick up the trophy. Can he go back to back with trophies? <laughs> we'll see next week, but I'm sure he'll be happy about this one. Impressive showing by uh, by him here. Congratulations to uh, Tamash. Yeah. See the people in the audience yeah. applauding him on. Yeah, he's and a, his whole team is here basically. Uh, cheering him on and uh, also some other uh, Hungarian players. They're a very tight-knit community and uh, I think it's great for them to have a trophy for the group, for the country. And that was actually the best part about this tournament. We already had a bit of a World Magic Cup atmosphere here. Yep. Mm. Hey, welcome back to the booth. I'm Matej Bigzalke for the first time this weekend joined by both Simon Gerton as well as Frank Carson. Uh, we've had a blast uh, this weekend and uh, I really thought like uh, that Tamas Nights to run through that top eight was great. He had a uh, very interesting deck. And I think he proved some of the theories uh, that we've uh, done throughout the weekend right. We've talked, uh, especially with Simon, about the importance of the early curve. But we also talked uh, with Frank about the importance of getting five mana to be mm. able to unmorph your spells and having stable mana. <laughs> we've underlined that several times. Uh, I think Tamas just showed that. He had everything in his deck. Uh, Yamamoto also showed it but yeah not as positively <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course and not so much on the sev on, on the stable mana base yeah he did uh, decide to go into four but uh, Tamar Dutch pulled it off with three also with some uh, with the help of CDC or just a death dealer and some other nice cars that, that were that were in his deck so uh, yeah overall great winner but uh, I'll just do a quick recap before we get Tamar in the booth for uh, the winners interview uh, this top eight was stacked with four pros coming into the quarterfinals and four pros entering semifinals. It was mm -hmm. Tamash Knight, he's a silver level pro, pro uh, Martin Yuza, platinum, uh, Kentaro Yamamoto, platinum, as well as Pierre Dajan Gold. And they all made it to the semis where uh, Pierre got to the final but just couldn't overcome Tamash's ruthless, uh, <laughs> ruthless Sultai deck. And uh, yeah, it's just overall uh, a great top eight. And I think we have Tamash here. So, guys, I'm going to say you bye. Leave. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it was great to be here. And don't miss uh, the tournaments next week. Yep. Here we go. Please join me. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, I get to know that I now know how it feels. So, how does it feel for you? It feels so good after so many years. Finally, Hungary have a champion. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you guys have been picking up Grand Prix top eights here and there. You did have the World Magic Cup top eight, which ended in an unfortunate manner. So, is it really that important for Hungary to have a trophy at home? I believe yes. It's, it's very important because every country around us already has like you. <laughs> and fi finally, we have one. Uh, tell me a little bit about your deck. Uh, we've seen it being very ruthless at times. So you kind of uh, look to go from an aggressive deck into a controlish uh, delve deck very quickly. Uh, how were you going about building your deck? Uh, I was very lucky opening the CDC, then Sulte just came around. I even have to pass the four free flyers because I know they will come around. And ha this happens. Nobody has got to Sulte. It was very open. Yeah, you were the only player on Sulte, and there were not even that many uh, people on uh, black green decks in general. So these cards were open. I think you, s you s not only opened the CDC, but it was good for you that the cards were flowing uh, freely. So uh, definitely good. Uh, we know that, you know, happy to have a trophy, but I'm sure you have your eyes on uh, next week. Friday starts the World Magic Cup, and I know you're on the team. Uh, what do you think about your chances? Uh, our team is very good. We have, like in the last two years, always was in top top four. So I hope we will make it again. And in last year, the week before the World Magic Cup, I also made top eight in a limited GP. So it's a good sign. 
we will do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. I mean, uh, we talked with Rich about this on during day one, that you have one of the most balanced teams where you have four very solid players. So uh, I'm sure you have some good plans on which player will sit out, which rounds, and you're going to help each other and be a very good team. Uh, I expect to meet you in the finals, personally. I hope <laughs> you have the same thing. Evan stronger than us, so we meet you. <laughs> uh, we shall see next week, all right? Yes. <laughs> all right, okay. So uh, there you have it, Tamas Nagy, the Gr GP Strasbourg champion. Uh, we had more than 2,000 people, but only one a worthy winner at the end. So uh, from GP Strasbourg, for me, I'm Matej Zalukai, the winner, Tamas Nagy, Frank Karsten, Simon Gertsen, Stephen Liming, and all the judge squad. Thank you very much for joining us and don't forget to tune in on Tuesday for the World Championships and on Friday for the World Magic Cup. See you. <laughs>